Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 28th of November with me, Patrick Munnerly. In the US, the market firmly believes that uh, the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates by 50 basis points on the 14th of December, given Fed speakers have indicated the likelihood of less aggressive step increases in interest rates after four consecutive 75 basis point hikes. However, the economic data is proving to be pretty resilient and markets are a little nervous that a 7% fall in the US dollar against uh, the currencies of its main trading partners and a 45 basis point drop in the 10 year treasury yield is leading to a significant loosening of financial conditions, the exact opposite of what the Fed wants to see as it continues to battle inflation. Consequently, wouldn't be surprised to see the Fed language become more aggressive over the coming week uh, talking about higher terminal interest rates with some of the more hawkish members perhaps even opening the door to a fifth uh, potential consecutive 75 basis point hike. Um, although we, markets don't really uh, coalesce around this idea and uh, it's really more of a an assurity to the markets that they get the message that the Fed is looking to tighten financial conditions. Currently, only three officials are scheduled to speak this week, uh, but wouldn't be surprised if we suddenly start to uh, see some more appearances on the media. Uh, Data-wise, the jobs report on Friday will be the focus, uh, but there will also be interest in the ISM manufacturing index and the Fed's favored measure of inflation, the core personal consumer expenditure deflator, both of which are out on Thursday. The ISM is likely to drift just below the break-even 50 level, given the softening trends seen in regional manufacturing indicators. PCE deflator could be interesting too, since it doesn't always match what happens in core CPI. If you remember uh, that rose only 0.3% month on month versus expectations of a 0.5% increase and was the catalyst for the recent drop in treasury yields as expectations for Fed rate hikes were scaled back at 0.4%. Four uh, percent, give or take, print uh, for month-over-month -month core PCE deflator could generate quite a sizable reverse reaction. Meanwhile, the jobs number should hold around the 200k mark, given the number of vacancies continues to exceed the number of unemployed uh, people by a ratio of 1.9 to 1. Nonetheless, there are more firings going on in the tech sector, and the increase in initial claims also points to softer employment growth in the coming months. From a technical perspective, dollar index. Uh, continues in the downtrend for now. What I'll be looking for this week is an initial break of the 105.55 to retest the 105.14 low. As we get to acceptance below there, we look for a test of our target zone at 104.39. From there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns for a potential counter trend rally back up into the trend channel resistance just above 107. Now, note this, uh, this red line here, the uh, 105.50s. If we hold this level, there is the potential we do a double correction and test into the 108.20s before moving lower once again. So just pay attention to a break of that 105.50s and then down through 105 into our target zone. Moving to the Eurozone. <clears throat> And in terms of uh, data next week, all eyes really are on inflation. Has Eurozone inflation figure uh, really ever been more important than the November reading that uh, is out on Wednesday? With the ECB focusing more on current inflation developments for determining when to move to smaller rate hikes. The November inflation figure will be very relevant for the December rate hike decision. While energy prices have been moderating, and other supply shocks are fading. The question is how quickly this impacts consumer prices. Also keep an eye on unemployment data released on Thursday. Any sign of labor market slowing will also be taken into account at the next policy meeting. From a technical perspective, as the euro dollar holds 103.50 as support, we look for a break through this uh, pivotal 104.48 and then through the prior cycle highs 104.80s on to test into our target of 10620s, which coincides with weekly trend line resistance. From there, I'd anticipate at least a corrective move, uh, but we will see how price responds once we get into the target zone. Similarly to the dollar index, there is the potential we do a double correction. If we hold this uh, 10440s as a high, we could test back down into the 10190s before once again reversing to the upside. At this stage, really take a close back through 10120s 
to suggest a more meaningful high is in place. Moving to uh, the UK, and in terms of the data slate next week on Monday, we get November nationwide house prices. Uh, housing market correction is clearly deepening in the UK. Last time out was a negative 0.9% print. And then moving to Thursday, we will get the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI final estimate looking for 46.2. And that rounds out uh, a pretty light data week in the UK uh, next week. So from a technical perspective, sterling holding up nicely. So we're looking for any pullbacks now into support at uh, just above 119.90. Watch your bullish reversal patterns there. And we're looking to test our target zone here of 122.12. From there, I'd anticipate a more meaningful correction to develop. So we'll be watching how price responds on that first test of that 120, just above the 122 handle. Certainly, if we've got some momentum divergence in play, I'd be looking for a tradable uh, pullback. But for now, the focus, whilst we hold this one, uh, 120, 119, 90 area, we look for a test of 122.12. Moving to Japan, in terms of data, pretty light slate as well next week in Japan. On Wednesday, October, industrial production, looking for a negative 1.7% print there. Soft export demand from uh, the Eurozone and the US is likely to weigh into year end. Then moving to Thursday, manufacturing PMI, final estimate looking for a 49.4 print there. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen is, uh, is retesting pivotal support here down to the 137.70s. I'm looking for a breakthrough there to test into our target zone, which is a 136 test. You see here on the daily time frame, 135.20, also the high volume node. And then that should complete this initial five wave sequence from the highs. And from there, I'll be watching again for bullish reversal patterns for at least a corrective move uh, to develop in the dollar yen. At this stage, we we'll really take a close back through 142.30 to suggest a more meaningful lows in place. And moving down under to Australia, in terms of the data, next week, Monday, we will hear from RBA Governor Lowe. He's appearing before the Senate Economics Committee. And then on Wednesday, October dwelling approvals, looking for a potential negative 5% print there. They have been surprisingly steady though, um, Q3, but still uh, set to fall as we head into Q4. We'll also get a monthly CPI 7.6% inspected there. CPI uh, trimmed mean, uh, percent year over year, looking for something in the 5.4% region. Um, the monthly indicator is a reliable leading indicator for the quarterly CPI. It is yet to show signs of peaking. Uh, in terms of other data on Wednesday, construction work done, looking for a 2% print there, only a partial rebound constrained by ongoing headwinds in the sector. And then heading to Thursday, Core Logic Home Value Index, looking for a negative 1% print there, price declines still look firmly entrenched in Australia. We also get uh, Q3 private new capital expenditure, looking for a 1.6% print there, upward trend in equipment, should see a partial rebound there. And uh, then we will get the CapEx plans estimated uh, 154 billion would be consistent with what we have seen in prior prints. And then rounding out the week in Australia, housing finance on Friday, looking for a negative 3.5% print there. Owner occupier finance looking for a negative 4.5% print and October investor finance looking for a negative 2%. Stabilizing turnover suggests a slower pace of decline for finance associated with purchase or established dwellings, but construction related looks to be down sharply. And we will also hear once again from our being a Governor Lowe on Friday, he's taking part in a panel uh, participant Bank of uh, Thailand conference. So from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar holding up nicely. So we're looking for uh, support here to be maintained at the 67 handle as it is. And then look for an upside extension into our target zone, 68.50 to 68.90. And then again, from there, I'll anticipate a uh, potential for a more meaningful correction. So we watch for uh, bearish momentum divergence to start to develop. And then we'll be looking for a three-way corrective pullback, at least to test into the 65.80s uh, before once again looking to re-establish upside momentum. And rounding out this week's outlook, let's just check in with Bitcoin and see where we are in terms of the weekend risk barometer. Holding up, just really rotating around this 16,500 level as it does so and uh, continues to find support above the 16,000 level. I'm looking for it to grind out an upside extension into uh, 
uh, the 18,000 level as the next upside objective. Obviously, any loss of the lows at 15,400 bearish development, and we're still looking for that 12,185 equality objective to the downside. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 28th of November. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.